saying, oh, I'm going to use faulting theorem and things like that. And <laughs> it has genus less than or equal to. Actually, so the only, I, I haven't gotten a full proof this way, but I think, it'd be inter I think that there should be a proof that comes from, from Siegel's theorem, which says if you have infinitely many integral solutions, then the genus of the locus of P must be zero, and it has to have fewer than three points in the hyperplane at infinity. Oh but I don't, I don't know, I don't know that. But what I can do is use either O minimality or the Hilbert irreducibility theorem to prove that P must have one of these two forms. Okay, and, and how do you do that? Well, Hilbert irreducibility says this. You take an irreducible polynomial over the rationals. And this is what it means for a field to be Hilbertian. You can specialize some subset of the variables to infinitely many different rational values, and the polynomial must remain irreducible. In fact, the Hilbert irreducibility theorem says more. It says you can specialize to infinitely many integral values, and the same holds true. And now we have a problem, because we specialize to infinitely many integral values, and we have integral solutions. How could it be irreducible? The only way is that it's linear. And so it has to be like that. And those are the only linear polynomials that, that map integers to integers up to multiplying by a constant, of course. Okay. And so it's, I think it's, a, it's just like, uh, sort of like we characterize the polynomial just by, by overwhelming it with so many restrictions. Um, and similar results, but of course more complicated, are available for the other Panlevé families, where the group is some very complicated discrete group, and then the polynomials that you use to characterize it are suitably complicated in the same way, but, but also determined in the same completely explicit way. You write them down that explicitly. Okay, so, yeah, so it's really surprising. Yeah, there's a proof by O minimality, which I came up with first. And then once I thought to use Hilbert irreducibility, at first I was, I was sad because I thought, oh, I'm a model theorist. I should be doing O minimality. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, so just what I said. Uh, these other things, and just, just as a side note, you could use in this proof, in this proof I used the integers simply because they, it's easier to phrase things in terms of the Hilbert irreducibility theorem for that, but you could also use the lo, locus one half plus z. Um, could you, as, okay, uh, could you, you can explain your argument uh, mm -hmm. regarding, so, so you, you plug yeah. in sort of variables what, and uh, yeah. could you so, quantify it correctly? Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'll try to explain it more carefully. Um, this is an irreducible polynomial over Q. Okay? And what the Hilbert irreducibility theorem says is that you can plug in... What does it mean you can? There exists. Okay. The Hilbert irreducibility theorem says for all but finitely many integers that you plug in for X, the polynomial remains irreducible as a single variable polynomial. Okay? But now we use the fact that. It's different from what's in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah, apologies if I stumbled over because the Because otherwise you take x squared minus y and uh, you take infinitely many. Okay, so it's. Right. We have a symmetric condition now. So it's a, t it's a more subtle proof than just bam, Hilbert irreducibility, because you have to apply it to both variables. Oh, okay. So you apply it to both variables and see that each one must appear in a manner which is linear. Okay. <laughs> because it's completely. And of course, you can see now why my proof only works generically. Because the whole argument is based on specializing to infinitely many integers. Mm -hmm. So if you start already with some, some alpha in, in QAlg, no specialization. You know. so, um, yeah, so for Panlevé 6, I'm, I'm pretty confident that after Ronnie and I talk a little bit, uh, we'll be able to prove that. Um, and, and there's some... Okay, so there's, there's some point about, about this, but you know, we, we clearly use the generosity of the parameters. I think the conjecture is most likely true in general. I don't have any idea really how to attack the problem in general. I, I don't know. So I think it would be very, very interesting to come up with a, a, a method of attack. Okay, and now I'm gonna quickly explain uh, how we answer Bolch's question, but um, the question is how quickly, so what time should we end? It's 11.27 now. Um, um, okay, so 15 minutes would be all right? Yeah. Okay, so, so I think that I can't explain it in 15 minutes. Okay, so, so remember, here's what we're trying to do. We're trying to see if I pick a transcendental alpha and 
transcendental and not interalgebraic, v1, v2, v3. Sorry, I switched from Greek to, <laughs> I don't know. Um, if, I, if I pick things like that, then could there be any algebraic relation between the solution of P2 of alpha and P4 of V1, V2, V3? Okay, and so here's what happened. Yeah. So, and they don't have to be mutually. And, uh, yeah, and this is essential. Ronnie points out, I am not assuming anything about alpha and V1, V2, V3 being, mm. being mutually generic. It could be that alpha equals V1, or it could be that alpha equals V1 minus V2, okay? I'm not assuming that. Alpha is generic, V1, V2, V3 is generic, but not mutually so. Aren't some penalty families special cases of other penalty families, and so you could accidentally end up with identical equations? No. No. <laughs> they, it's not the differential algebraic sort of. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there are some, um, I guess you would say analytic yeah. uh, results that, that are similar to what you mentioned. In, in this case, you may introduce P4. Can you still just re talk about algebraic relations rather than differential algebraic? It turns out the answer to your question is yes. You think always this will be true for the Penlevé equation? In fact, that that's, that is... Um, a rational map, there will always be a rational map. Oh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> that may be too strong. Um, but it's the same thing. No, no, no. But I mean, whether whether you would, yeah, whether you would use the derivative rather than just the variable itself. Yeah, that's what I mean. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. There's something. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, certainly, yeah. in special case, I certainly think that's true. But I, I'm, again, that'd be. I mean. It's interesting because since these solutions are hyper, hyper, hyper transcendental, so far away from algebraic. Mm -hmm. uh, that the arguments used in most of this are have an intense algebraic flavor, not just differential algebraic, but rational flavor, number theoretic flavor. Yeah, I think so. I mean, is it because of their low order? Generic parameters. I'm not sure. Yeah. Philosophically. Yeah, I've thought less about about like why the arguments work than uh, than actually I mean, than actually making them work, but, but maybe um, generic parameters. Yeah. The generic parameters certainly has a lot to do with it because you have this intense flexibility to specialize uh, to exceptional sets, and the exceptional sets are of a very arithmetic nature, being Z or other infinite discrete subsets of. The yeah, it's, it's the nature numbers. of the Beckman transformations yeah. of the parameters. Yeah, and the, and. And the exceptional sets, the, the Bachman transformations for the other equations, have a similar arithmetic flavor. They're not just z, but they're things like right. this parameter minus this parameter squared is right. in z, or things like that. So I think that it comes in through that, but I, I haven't thought carefully. OK, so, um, <clears throat> so here's why, here's why um, Ronnie and Anand stopped, which actually, this is just due to, to Ronnie. Here's why um, the style of argument that he was doing, it wouldn't work for, for showing this, for this P2, P4 case. It worked actually in most of the other cases, all of them except P2, P4, and um, other one, P3, 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 P5, right? Okay. So it worked in all of the other cases except for this one, uh, for, except for these two. And the reason is that he's, he's arguing about specializations based on and, and other mathematicians' characterization of the algebraic solutions. And the structure of the algebraic solutions of P2 and P4 is almost identical. Yeah, so good. you can't play them off each other in the same way. People will write about P2, then move right to P4. Yeah. That's right. Sorry to interrupt you mm -hmm. and, and backtrack. In, on this slide, when you say for generic values, <clears throat> you mean that alpha is generic. And V1, V2, V3 is generic. generic. But as not a triple? as a triple. As a triple, yes. For generic for what? For Euclid. I mean that, before, let me just before, state it explicitly. I mean V1, V2, and V3 are transcendental numbers, and between the three of them, they, they satisfy no, poly no polynomial yes. equation over Q. So, <laughs> so the basically is what I'm talking about. Yes. So very strange relation between the parameters the three dimensional parameter space for P4 yeah. and the one dimensional parameter space for P2, you'd essentially have a 
rational map from P3 to P4, taking the triple of the Vs to the alphas at um, for whom it is uh, for whom it is not orthogonal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might be able to argue in in that way. That would be weird. It would be weird. Um, I mean, but I don't okay. see how to rule it yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's certainly. Yeah, that style proof seems like you know, maybe you could make something work there, but um, that's not the way that Ronnie's proof works and not the way my proof works. Okay, so let me just recall, I mean, here William asked uh, what is Morley degree, and I'll say what it is. All of the sets we are dealing with are Morley rank one sets. That means that, again, just to be clear for people not um, involved in model theory so much, uh, this differential variety is Morley rank one, if the only differential subvarieties are either the whole thing or finite collection of points. Okay? That's what Morley rank one means. Okay? That's what that or sorry, that's what strongly minimal means. Yes. <laughs> sorry. Okay. And Morley rank one means that you can be decomposed into um, Morley rank one means that you can be finite, decomposed into finite. finitely many pieces which are strongly minimal. Okay, so in specifically it means there are not infinitely many subsets which are pairwise <coughs> disjoint and infinite. Okay? So any Morley rank one set can be written as a finite union of strongly minimal sets. And the number of strongly minimal sets in that finite in that finite union is the Morley degree. So in the case of P2 of uh, one half, for instance, there's, there's the equation, which is order two. There is one, exactly one, order one subvariety. And you can write the whole thing as the union of the order one subvariety and then the generic piece, the, the whole thing, take away the order one subvariety. Okay. So it's not true that we're writing it as a union of closed things. Okay. It's just a union of constructible things. Okay. And the nut, so the number of sets in that decomposition is the Morley degree. And the Morley degree... So that's, it, so that's independent? The de decomposition is unique or what? No, because, not in this sense, because you could... You could, it's unique up to finite sets, but... Um, oh, because it's strongly minimal. Yeah, okay. yeah, but you could throw, say, finitely many points into one and the other the way that right. I've done it, but you wouldn't right. want to do that. Okay. Um, all right, now, um, what I showed is that um, on a risky dense but discrete subset of the parameters of P4, you actually have Morley degree three, so it's different. So. For P2, you have this discrete subset with Morley degree 2. And for P3, you have this discrete subset with Morley degree 3. P, sorry, for P4, you have P4, you have Morley degree 3 on this discrete subset. Okay, and now you repeat the same style of argument as before. You first say, suppose that we have a non-orthogonality, and you use some, what I'm just treating as model theoretic black boxes, to prove that it must be a bijection. And you know that that bijection must hold on a Zariski open subset of the locus of alpha with V1, V2, V3. But now it's a bijection, and somewhere in that locus, by, by the density of these discrete subsets, you have to have a point where you map a set bijectively, which has Morley degree 2 to Morley degree 3. And that's a contradiction, because bijections preserve Morley degree. Yeah. So, and um, a similar degree jumping argument works for um, for the other cases of Bolch's conjecture. It's a similar. So I know this is a very sketchy proof. I gave more of the details in the last style argument, but it, I knew that we would be running out of time. So I'm, this is very sketchy. But Are the bijections just set bijection or definable? They're definable. They're definable. Yeah. Yeah, they're definable. Yeah. All right, and, and you use that also to resolve the other case of Bolch's okay. conjecture, okay? And so the point is somehow that the, con the idea goes like this. Could you have a map between these two 
generic parameter sets. Maybe. Study the invariants of the family and see that the invariants of the family are sufficiently different so as to preclude that. In Ronnie's case, he studied algebraic solutions, and in my case, I studied Morley degree. Yeah. And the other important ingredient is that these strange invariants mm -hmm. are on special fibers, but the non-orthogonality between generic fibers magically Yeah, changes. that's right, that's right. <laughs> because non-orthogonality is witnessed by a fixed formula. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, for the, at that generic point. Uh -huh. and, and, you, and, well, it's got to hold somewhere. It holds generically. It's got to specialize a lot. And that's why, of course, I say I don't know how to prove this um, for, uh, for special fibers. Although I have some rough ideas, but, I, but I, I, it won't be easy, I don't think. And the got to specialize a lot has to go down to something specific about what's going on. It's not general model theoretic nonsense, right? Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. It's this human yeah, so, ability. Yeah, yeah. So, so a good point. I do have some results that work not at the fully generic points of some of the equations, um, but, uh, but you have to, you need at least a pinch of specialization to make any of the arguments work, I'll say it that way. So you wonder why some varieties are all Riccati varieties, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. sure, they have to have, <coughs> yeah, except, have, have no movable singularities. That's right, except for Penla Bay 6, oh. yeah, where you could get men and kernels. Right, 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 right. right. for about that. What about what, the degree three for Penla Bay 4, what are the, Definable subsets that give you more degree three, the components. Yeah, they they are like Riccati style of varieties. So they're like two, two Riccatis. Yeah, they're like two Riccatis. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I mean, there's there's incredibly in, there, see there's incredibly detailed work by mm -hmm. by the Japanese school actually writing these down. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's incredible that they did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. really what interests me probably. In, uh, just me, no one else, oh, is that uh, the Riccati varieties are all homogeneous spaces for differential algebraic groups. That's true, yeah. So I was wondering if, oh no, I guess so that there's not much choice here because you only have order one or order two for the infinite varieties. Yeah, I'm not sure. And also, an important note is that the Riccati sub varieties, even though, say, for P2 of one half, you write down the Riccati subvariety. Right. It's not as if the other Riccati subvarieties that appear uh, appear uniformly. They're cut out by higher and higher and higher degree equations. Yeah. Yeah. And you know that that must be so because yeah. they're only subvarieties on a discrete locus. Right. And if they were uniform in any way, then they would be inherited by the generic point. Yeah. So, yeah. Can you raise Phyllis's question mm -hmm. in a more model theoretic friendly way? Sure. Is it true that? For an arbitrary Penlevé equation, yes. the, with the exceptional parameters when they have a proper differential subvariety, mm -hmm. that differential subvariety is always group work. Or it's field like, I mean. It's field like, yeah. It's field like. Oh, it's always field like? It's field like, yeah. Riccati equations yeah, are field like ah, in the trichotomy. Okay, so the whole thing yeah, is always trivial. Yeah, but, but, but else, that always must be so, because be, unless the order one thing was going to be trivial. trivial. Because for order one, we know that you're either trivial or field like. Mm -hmm. In fact, we know much more. We know that you're actually uh, countably categorical mm -hmm. or, okay. uh, or field like. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. Oh. That's another story. Another day. Um, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm, asking, I'm asking various questions here, but all these okay. questions are basically, can you somehow do my arguments without the specialization? Maybe there's some differential algebraic technique which could be employed, which I haven't come up with. Uh, you know, the same thing comes in uh, for sure. the Chinese in Beijing <laughs> working on the Chao form. Uh, all the results are generic. But, oh, but yes, the, I know. <laughs> the rate counter example yeah. means when you, when you specialize in a very natural way, yeah. it all goes away. Yeah, of course. I mean, so um, it's, uh, yeah. And algebraic geometry tends not to be so much like that. Yeah. With respect to specialization, preserving niceness. Right. Yeah. Uh, so I, I don't have anything intelligent no. to say about the. Specialization um, doesn't preserve niceness. Well, you can take something smooth, <laughs> specialize it. It certainly does for chow forms. <laughs> it does for chow forms. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, 
That's something like intersection theory. Um, Not for yeah, differential calculus. The trouble is in the differential algebra, there are no results that you can say in general when you specialize. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. The question I'd like answered is, is off, a, off a certain set, we always have the preservation of the generic properties, like the result of, uh, of uh, Ronnie and Anand. They have they pinned down the bad set, the special <coughs> sets. But so these are very nice, even though they're awful. So I, I think in the last two minutes, I just switch very slightly and say, well, okay, I mean there was. There was this question that I said got me interested in all of this at the beginning. And, um, and unfortunately, the work stemmed from very bad news for answering this question. Because um, Rahim and I had resolved uh, one of the three numbers in the gap. Uh, we took care of two. But then there's still three and four. And this example of uh, Anand and Rani had taken care of three. And if you take care of three in a negative manner, you automatically take care of four. But let's leave that. Um, <clears throat> I was actually able to resolve this with a different example. And I just mentioned it. Um, it's related to some, uh, some work that I did um, coming from the, the Colchin workshop last spring, in fact. I mean, uh, probably that would have... Probably would have not done it if not for, for that workshop. So, um, but you consider a polynomial vector field like this. Um, okay, well, actually, f and g could be rational. Could be a rational vector. Okay, but oh, yeah. um, over k for some differential field, and I'm considering the differential variety given by these. Um, and so we don't have much time, but to dwell on it. But I've I've seen that there's a connection between that set, the, so this is a system of equations in two variables, an order two differential equation, if you like. There's a connection between that having Morley rank two, okay, and this set, which is an order one differential equation, being non-orthogonal to the constants. So somehow, these two things that model, theoretic, model theorists are really obsessed with, ranks and orthogonality to the constants, mm -hmm. yeah, they're actually related. So maybe there's a reason we're obsessed with those two things. But no, I'm just joking, sort of. But, um, but there's a connection there. And the thing is, we understand this problem much better than we understand that problem. So we understand orthogonality to the constants in a better way at least if you know about Rosenleak's work. Um, so, um, so again, we have this. And here's the idea of the example that I've produced that has Morley rank 3 and Lascar rank 2. Rm is Morley and Ru is Lascar. M for Morley and U for something. So you define a family, you define <coughs> a family of differential varieties, which I call Xc, with C being a parameter which comes from the constant field of the derivation. And you design it so that xc is non-orthogonal to the constants if and only if c lies in some infinite discrete subset. And remember, that's exactly what you need in order to witness that, that Morley rank goes up, but Lascar rank doesn't. And luckily, Dave Marker and Tracy McGrail already noticed an example like this. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. This, I've, I've written this incorrectly. Xc is the differential variety I'm writing down, and it should say y prime equals this. Oh. I'm sorry, I, there's a mistake. Here. Oh. So it, it's a differential equation. It should read y prime equals this rational function. And they prove that, um, that this is orthogonal to the constants exactly in the case that c is irrational, and non-orthogonal to the constants exactly in the case that c is rational. And you use this to get something that comes from an order two differential variety, but produces this as a quotient. And then you know a, the statement of the rank in those special fibers. And that's exactly the kind of thing you need to get high Morley rank, but not high Lascar rank. And so the, the, the question of Rashovsky and Scanlon is, uh, I think, closed now. Um, since we have an order three counterexample and we know the 
positive answer in order to. Okay, so that's it, and thanks to uh, many, many people for talking about various aspects of the work with me. Is there a parallel concept of uh, Lascar degree? And have you studied these, these things? In those well, see, um, th there can't quite be because, um, I mean, I mean, yeah, you, you you can, you could you could, but but the problem is that. The, pro the fundamental problem is it can't be um, defined set theoretically in the same way as Morley rank, because with Morley rank, you say, I'm Morley rank one means that you can't get infinitely many pieces to chop me up into uh, that are all infinite and disjoint. Um, but that's not what Lascar rank one means. Lascar rank one means that you can't be cut up into pieces, into infinitely many pieces, but they have to be defined by the same formula where a parameter varies. So it's like with these pan levee equations, for instance. The exceptional subvariety is defined by these totally different equations in the different special fibers. So it's not, that's what I mean by non-uniform. The degree of that, the degree of the equation which cuts out the special variety it gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more Bachlin transformations you apply and the higher you move up the integers. Well, I guess it would allow the theory to be the Lascar degree to range up to the cardinality of the language. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. So yeah, yeah, you could. No, no, of course. In reasonable places, it would be a finite number or all of them. Yeah, yeah, of course you could. Yeah. And um, then from the finite from having a finite number, you might be able to get something. But I guess unless your Morley rank is, I don't know. Would that be interesting? I don't know. Um, is it related at all to the number of irreducible components? In yeah, the, uh, of course. Uh, of, course it, of course it is. But, uh, but, the, well. but the problem is that, look, here's, this seems like a very hard problem in differential algebra, what I'm about to say. Can you tell, given a family of differential polynomials, can you can you tell the, the number of of irreducible oh, components? That, I mean, that's the writ problem. I mean, that's yeah. We all know that this is seems like a hard I'll problem. I guess. That. But, <laughs> <laughs> how, I mean, how big your students? Yeah. Then how do you relate the fact that the property that the you know the Pendleby equations, um, the, the uh, morning rank and the last hour are the same? Well, because. Even though we get this non-uniform family of subvarieties, their their rank is too low to affect the global rank. And see, so so are you, would you be able to translate the the, the idea of yeah, one of degree to Lascar degree in this particular situation? Not not in general. I guess one could. I I don't know. I'm, Maybe model theory could. I'm not sure. I, I think I may be. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm not sure if I totally understand the questions about this uh, this hypothetical thing, but but I'd be willing to entertain the idea. So, so here's another question, going back to the um, uh, to the Khrushchev scanning question. Yes. Um, let me advocate for the devil and say that it is not answered. All you found is a counterexample, not a reason. Well, okay, but 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 yeah, sure. I found a counterexample, but 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 at least for at least for families of planar uh, rational vector fields, we have a pretty complete understanding of 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 the of the situation. Now, of course, order three equations in general are much more complicated than than that. But, well, no, but, I mean, but is there a conceptual object that is causing the counterexamples to come into existence? Yeah, I, I don't is know. There, yeah, is there I, a little yeah. gremlin sitting behind all the counter yeah. examples <laughs> making them tick? Yeah, yeah it's a good question. Um, yeah, I think that was there. Yeah, I think, yeah of course, there, there are other questions I mean, about the structure of the sub for instance. But. <laughs> yeah, so in, in your example, are the order one sub varieties uniform? Uh, um, no. No, no, no. That's, that's an essential mm -hmm. yeah. point. 
So in those Rosenleak examples, what it, what it means when Rosenleak writes that this is a, um, non-orthogonal to the constants, um, in, in that context, I mean, you can translate that. And what it means is that it has an algebraic first integral. But the way in which you write down the algebraic first integral, it blows up as you, as you change the constant. See, because somehow that constant affects the the degree of the algebraic first integral. Because when you differentiate something mm -hmm. high degree, you pull down the, the exponent. And that's where the C comes from. So yeah, so, so this non-orthogonality of the constants is related in a very serious way to algebraic first integrals. And there's a, an appendix of the paper I wrote. Um, Ronnie, joined me with Ronnie and, um, and uh, Tew, who uh, is not here. Uh, and, um, where these two notions are connected. So. So, so another way of looking at what Alice just asked could be that I'm sure you have tried to prove that. Tried to prove what? Uh, the, the thing that the concrete couple is for. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want that, I don't remember. Um, so, so have you, well, of course you don't succeed, right? Yeah. But you have some, some plan. So, at what step is your plan fail with that example that you just did? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I ever had such a good plan, <laughs> um, uh, to be honest. Yeah, I don't know if I had such a good plan. Now, okay, see, what happens is, is this. I mean, you've got steps, right, the yeah. that you want to do. So, well, you can go through, but then you get a counterexample, so can you match the two and see where where, what step does that well, counter it's example? Well, it's counter. just, I guess, it, I guess it's like this, in, in a way. What does it for, for me. contradict? It's, yeah. it's, it's like this. If you're dealing with differential sub-varieties of co-order one, so that have order one less than the order of your original variety, yeah. then the situation becomes much more um, constrained because right. those... <coughs> Because there are results of a sort of Joanalu style, which um, is really what my result with Rahim is. There are results of a Joanalu style that basically say somehow you can't just have all of these exceptional co order one sub varieties. If that happens, then you've got to have some uniform one somewhere floating around. Um, but the reasons for that are, are complicated. It's like saying if a vector, if a polynomial vector field on the plane has infinitely many invariant algebraic curves, then it has to have an algebraic first in. Yeah. It's a style of result analysis. like that. You couldn't just have all these exceptional higher and higher degree curves without having some object that controls them. Yeah. Very nice. Thanks. Okay. Uh, let's have one.